Thank you all for tuning in tonight. Uh, again, we're filming here live from the Tractor Tavern uh, in Seattle, Washington. Uh, this is the 13th annual Gimme Shelter. And uh, because the bug is still going around, we decided uh, that we would do this virtually again this year. Uh, this is a very important cause. Uh, all the proceeds tonight are going to benefit DESC. And we're going to give you a little more information about this great organization that is helping to provide housing for Seattle's most vulnerable homeless citizens. Uh, we want to thank um, our sponsors tonight. Um, we got Vulcan, Walsh Construction. We got Lotus Development Partners, Bellwether Enterprise, J.P. Morgan Chase, and T-Mobile. Uh, you can also donate uh, from your home or your car or wherever you're listening. You can text DESC to 44321, or you can go to give.desc.org slash donate. All right, we're going to play some more tunes for you. Thanks for hanging out with us. found me in my arms you lay you are the one girl the reason I stay you are the one girl the reason I stay you are the reason I keep a coming your way Why don't you turn around and send me out in the cold you know I've been around when you're the end of my road you lift me up feel like a king when I am wounded I can't feel the sting I want to hold you and love you every day you are the one girl the reason I stay
When you're a master of deception, evangelizing hate. Building up a fortune with henchmen by your side. And we never stop to think and wonder why. No, we never stop to think. About a month ago, I had the opportunity to sit down with the executive director of DESC, Daniel Malone. Um, we had a fantastic conversation. He's a, he's a guy I really admire, and uh, I got to know him a little better and uh, hear a little more in depth about the services and programs that DESC provides. Um, I hope that you'll enjoy this interview. Hello, everyone. I am here with the executive director of DESC, Daniel Malone. Have you ever played an instrument? I did. I played uh, clarinet for a year or so. Clarinet. And then I moved on to the percussion. Is that right? Yeah. Did you ever light a clarinet on fire? I had never lit one on <laughs> fire, and I've really only seen one person who does that. Well, you plays know, it while it's on fire. You, you know, uh, whatever we can do to get people's attention, to pay attention to uh, our friends at DESC. We're going to do it. So where are you from originally? I grew up in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, yeah. And when did you move to Seattle? I moved here in 1989. I had just finished college on the East Coast and wound up at DESC and didn't really know a whole lot about this kind of work and these circumstances people were living in and uh, but I really fell in love with it and the people really fast. Well, thank you. We're all better for uh, your uh, choice there, for sure. Could you tell us about the size of DSC now compared to when you first came on board? Yeah, pretty dramatically different uh, organizations uh, now versus 32 years ago when I started. You know, instead of two dozen staff, we actually have about 800 staff. And instead of serving a couple hundred uh, people, we serve several thousand people every day. And we do a, a much broader array of services today um, and are really involved in people's lives for the long haul right. for a lot of folks right. um, by having permanent supportive housing for people by having uh, outpatient and specialized mental health and substance use disorder uh, treatment for people that we're able to deliver in a way that they can stay engaged yeah, with what do you think the most important thing in the last year you know even beyond covid has happened for for dsc you know, the pandemic forced us to make some very quick changes to some of our most basic survival services. Mm -hmm. So, you know, DSE was founded originally to be an overnight shelter for people just to keep them right. safe. And we continue to operate shelter because the need continued to be there. We didn't have enough housing right. for everybody. The pandemic made that... Uh, extremely risky and so we very quickly moved away from doing that right. and 
Um, and we saw the benefits of that immediately. Um, people who had been kind of elbow to elbow and cramped quarters were able to have their own places in hotel rooms that we were operating. So you saw that personal space really improved their well-being like across exactly. the board. Totally. A, yeah. a much less stress on people, much less conflict right. between people. You know, on my personal situation with my brother who was homeless uh, and DSE found, you know, it gave him a small apartment. It's worked for him for over a decade now uh, where yeah. he's had the peace of mind of his own own room. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of, of housing we're trying to create for everybody. Thanks again. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure getting to know you and uh, to be affiliated with DESE. You're so kind, Billy Joe, and um, to do all this work you've done on behalf of the work that we do and um, just the warmth that uh, you and your family have shown DESC and uh, we're so grateful and um, really Thank you. it's a great arrangement. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I think we're vaccinated. Yeah, we are. All right. <laughs>
All right, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce my great friends here to you, my bandmates. Uh, over here on my right is this masterful guitar player. This is Mr. Rod Cook. And on my left, my longtime friend on the upright bass, Mr. Robin Cady. And back on the drums, that's my pal, Cohen Burl. All right, my name is Billy Joe Hules, if you already didn't know that. Uh, and I'm so happy to be here rocking out for you all tonight in the cause of DESC. Many of you know about the situation that brought me to DESC uh, with my brother. My brother Matt and I were very close and uh, in his 30s he got schizophrenia and became homeless. Didn't know how to take care of himself or to how to even relate to just the general things that we take for granted, like how to feed himself or how to just be part of a, of a normal community. So after years of living on the street, he ended up in the Western State uh, Mental Hospital. He just couldn't find his way. Um, and until the DESC found him and gave him a roof over his head and a, and a, a room with uh, a key that he could go and, and collect his thoughts and have that security, he was lost. So I'm grateful to the DESC for this. Um, as is my entire fa family. And then we've seen all the other work that they do and we've gotten really familiar with their services and how it's helped countless individuals suffering from mental illness and addiction problems. So please open up your hearts and your pocketbooks. Help us help the, the folks who, who are helping my brother and thousands like him. It's the nurses, the caseworkers, the mental health uh, staff, the employment specialists, uh, the facilities who run all these, these facilities, and you know, the administrative staff. There's a 25,000, great news, $25,000 matching donation. So if you give today, um, this anonymous uh, source is gonna match up to 25,000. So uh, no amount is too small, but please think about the problems that we're dealing with all across our country and support these great organizations, this great organization that is doing so much to help alleviate the pain of so many. Thank you. Something I rarely do is play uh, unplugged by myself. Obviously, I like to have a band around me. Um, but I did. Uh, I wrote this song uh, in honor of my brother and of all the folks who are suffering uh, from homelessness um, nationwide and you know throughout the world. Here's my song. When you're down and out and you're left without a home The doorways and the dumpsters and the parking lots you roam You keep falling down but there's no one to help you up all alone Is there someone who can help me get back home? Help me get back home When you're hearing voices that'll never give you peace In the shelters and encampments and the alleys where you sleep I didn't choose to live in this mental combat zone all alone Is there someone who can help me get back home? Mm -hmm, help me get back home Without a home Without a home, but we must build our reputy with all these things that we don't need. I can see your weak and poor, but I am choosing to ignore you. When 
When you're down and out and you're left without a home, shackled by the demons that haunt you to the bone. There are many reasons that I've ended up out here all alone. Is there someone who can help me get back home? Help me get back home. Without a home. Without a home. But we must build.